Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to be talking about the last standard window, which is the console window. So let's get started. All right, so here we have our tutorial project open in Unity. And the console window I have located right here. It's connected to the same panel as my scene view window. Now there's not a whole lot of visual features to identify the console window by, but there is this horizontal line that goes across the bottom of the console window and the tab of the console window is labeled with console and it has a little page icon with some lines going across it. Now to give you a brief definition of what the console window is, the console window is a tool that notifies the developer of any mistakes or errors or data that he needs to know about in his scripts. Now there's three different types of messages that can be displayed on the console window. The first is just standard debug statements. The second is warning messages, and the final one is error messages. All right, so I've gone ahead and created a little script here, which I've named test. And this script is just to show a couple different examples of these messages that we can receive in our console window. So the first one that we can see right now is an error message, and we can identify error messages by this red stop sign symbol that has an exclamation point in it. And next to this symbol, we have the actual error message itself. And this says assets slash script slash test dot CS, which is the file location of the error message. And then inside these parentheses, we have the line number in which the error is occurring and the location on that line where it's occurring. Now the error that we're receiving is an error CS1525, which is the error code. And the message that comes with this error code is an unexpected symbol debug. Now in future videos we'll talk more about debugging your code but one quick tip that is going to be helpful for you just starting out is that if you're ever getting an error message you can click on the error message itself and it'll open your code directly to where the error is occurring. So I'm going to double click on this error message and here it takes us to our code in Visual Studios and here we have our error. This red squiggly line is under the term debug, and that's why it was saying unexpected symbol debug. But when we cursor over this debug term, we can see that what we're missing is a semicolon because it says semicolon expected. And so on the previous line, we need to add a semicolon at the end. Once we add the semicolon, we can see that we are no longer receiving any error messages. So we can go ahead and save this script. And there we have it. We no longer have any error messages in our console window. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this script to our cube object in our scene. Now real quick, when we go back to our script, we can see what this script is supposed to do. So in the start function, meaning when the very first frame of our video game plays, we can see that we're going to debug.log this string here, which says this line has run. And then we're going to debug.log warning. So we're going to print out a warning message to the console and it says, don't forget your semicolons. So now when we go back to Unity and we enter the play mode by hitting this play button up at the top, we can see that our console now prints out two different messages. So the first one is a simple debug statement, which is symbolized by this little quotation bubble and an exclamation point. And this line says this line has run. So normally when you're developing a video game your code will have a bunch of different paths and to find out which path is being executed you can add debug statements to every path and then when a debug message prints out to the console you can double click on it and in your script it will identify where in your script it has executed. So that's one helpful tip for using debug statements. Another helpful tip is if you have any variables and you want to print out the values that are being saved in those variables, you can then debug.log that variable and it'll print out the value saved in that variable. The second message that we're getting is a warning message and we can identify it as a warning message because it has a yellow triangle symbol which normally represents warning and it has a little white exclamation mark inside. Now the message that we're receiving is a don't forget your semicolons message. So this was a warning that I as the developer added to the code to remind me not to forget my semicolons. Now all of these messages can be manually entered in by the developer 
So you can have debug.log or debug.log warnings or debug.log errors. And these are all helpful tools used by the developer to notify himself of information that he needs to know about his video game. But as well, all of these messages can be printed to the console by the compiler of Unity. So here you can see that when I stopped the play mode of Unity, I received these two additional debug statements. Now anytime the compiler outputs debug statements to the console, it's nothing really to worry about. It's just saying, hey, this happened, just wanted to let you know, not a big deal, you can keep working. If the compiler outputs a warning message, like if I were to delete my test script and then hit play mode, you can see that I received these warning messages, which aren't warning messages that I manually put into my scripts. In fact, I don't have any scripts to run. And these warning messages are notifying me that there's an object, such as this cube, that has a script component added to it in the inspector, but the script is missing. Now, warning messages like this are often to notify the developer that there's something wrong, but it's not game-breaking. Now, error messages are a little different. Whenever you receive an error message from the compiler, it's saying, hey, this is really important and you need to fix it as soon as possible. Now, some error messages won't even let you play your game. And in those cases, you really do need to fix them right away. In the example where I was missing the semicolon, that is a error that would not let me play the game if I tried as hard as I could. Oftentimes, these error messages are called compiler errors because they happen prior to the execution of your game. The other type of error message is a runtime error. These often occur during the execution of your game. Most of the time with runtime messages, you can keep playing your game, but your game is not gonna function the way you want it to. So I went ahead and removed the script component that was attached to our cube. And so now when I play our game, I will no longer get a warning message. Now there's a few additional features with the console window that we want to run through real quick. So starting at the top left, this clear button will clear any messages that are currently printed in your console window as long as that error message isn't still occurring. So for example, compiler errors cannot be cleared from the console because they're still occurring. Moving on to this collapse button, the collapse button makes it so that only the first instance of a message will be printed to the console. So sometimes you'll have a debug statement in the update function of Unity, meaning that it will print to the console every single frame. If you have the collapse button selected, then only the very first instance of the execution of that line will print the message to this console. The next button is one that I have always selected, and that is clear on play. This makes it so that any of the previous error messages that aren't still occurring will be cleared from the console every time you restart the play mode of your game. The next button, error pause, will pause your game every time a runtime error is printed to your console. This last option on the left side of the console that says connected players is used for multiplayer games and it makes it so that you can receive messages from other players connected to the same game that you're running. Moving over to the right side of the console window, we have these three toggleable buttons. And these three buttons make it so that you can turn on and off the visibility of the three different types of messages. So here you can see that we have a debug symbol, a warning symbol, and an error symbol. So if I unselect any of these buttons, then those messages correlated with that symbol will not print to the console. So for example, if you only want to see error messages, then you can unselect the debug statements and the warning statements, and then you'll only ever see the error messages that are printed to your console. Another feature that we want to mention about the console window is why this window is divided into two parts. Now we have this first part up at the top, which lists all of the messages that we're receiving. So if we're getting a hundred or a thousand messages, then all of those messages will be displayed in this top portion of the console window. This bottom portion of the console window will display more information about the particular message that is currently selected. So for example, if I then select this debug statement, we can see that there's a little bit more information listed here in this bottom section of the console window. So that's everything that we wanted to cover in this lesson of the console window in Unity. 
We're finally done with all the standard windows, and so from now on we can finally start getting into the meat of things. This is where it's going to start getting really exciting. Now if you have any questions about the console window, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we release new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.